What's up everybody? Today I'm sort of gonna show you how I turn my cluttered office space into a nice, a nice office space with a built-in bookshelf. <laughs> So if I'd have planned it out better, at least uh, with the logistics of the video, then I would have done a super fast shot of me working. But uh, unfortunately, the cameras were off. You know, this isn't like behind the music or whatever, where the cameras are always rolling. But unfortunately, so I just have like pictures that I took of various steps. I did plan it out, obviously, with like paperwork and stuff like that. Being just like me scribbling on paper and um, receipts from the hardware store. So... I did take photos, like I said, so I'm gonna roll through some different steps of that. But really, I just broke it down into two parts. The first part here is just for the base. So I got it down from uh, these cabinets right here. I got three of those with the shelves in the middle. The top shelf, top shelf down. Where's the top shelf at? Boop, right here. This part down, even with the base. So with any kind of demo project, right, I just tried to map out the room. Of course, the walls aren't they are not square at all. Uh, in fact, they're somewhat concave, which I had to factor into. First things first is that I cut away all of the trim right here, but it's the same trim that goes along the side of the, uh, of the, of the room itself and also over to the corner here, which would kind of a nightmare for these uh, the closet space. But uh, I got that off and I tried to be as ginger with it as I could. I had to be real soft, real soft and delicate. Right, so that I could reuse that. Got that stuff out of the way, and then I started going to the baseboards. I'll show you my picks of, of that. They're just two by threes, and basically all I wanted to do was just make, make a base for the store-bought cabinets to sit on. And this is my blank canvas that I'm building into, which is 16 inches deep, 90 inches high, and 120 inches wide, just for your reference. So I got the two by threes cut accordingly, and they're a little bit shy of where the closet starts, like you see in the upper right-hand corner, just so that I could have the cabinets, which are store-bought, sit pretty flush on the skeleton, and then I could reinstall that trim that you saw later. But those cabinets are 12 inches deep, 30 inches high, 36 inches wide, and I have the depth of my shelf that you see here is 14 inches deep. So now that like, the skeleton base is all put together, right? I got those situated, and then I spaced out these these cabinets, like I said, these are your store-bought cabinets. You can get them from your big box store or whatever, and that's exactly what I did. Took everything out of the box, sanded it down, and then uh, I put a coat of primer, and then I had the specific off-white color that is the same as the ceiling and the doors on the closets. So I wanted all that to, to match. The other one being the, the stain. We got the stain. We've been using it around, around the house just for different projects that I've been working on and stuff like that. So it, it's consistent with the motif of what we're doing in our household, right? So that's all well and good. I put, uh, the only difference really is you can see on part of one of the skeleton clips uh, that I just rolled earlier, is that right in the center, right? I stuck another little uh, one by three just to give it a little bit more support and also to drive the base part that I, that I stained right there. Right, that way it has something to catch into, it's supported a little bit better, and it's not gonna bow over time. That was the idea. So once everything was in its place as you know where it wanted to be or whatever, we we had baskets that we had right here, but they've since moved on. We might utilize them later on, but they're stained. Uh, my wife got some uh, some baskets from the from a different big box store, and then we or no, she didn't either. She got them from a thrift store, I think. And then she stained them herself with the same kind of stain that we did for this guy right there. And I thought that was pretty sweet. So after that part was all put together, and then it was time to redo that, the molding that was, well, the molding here I did by hand. Uh, the stuff on the bottom, the, the, the trim on the bottom, was, uh, was stuff that I reutilized. And I was very proud of getting the corner pieces back in right here. And I'll show that clip of the, at the time. All right, so I notched out the little piece. We're gonna see if it fits right there. Focus right there, okay. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna kind of slide it back. Up in the position. Oh, move this guy. And then in. Hey, that's pretty damn good. What about that? That feels pretty nice, huh? Kaboom, baby.
So as you can see, I did have the baskets here, but there was an overhang and I didn't like that. So I added them into this closet and then decided to just uh, reorganize the entire closet for storage. They said it couldn't be done, but I proved the haters wrong. <laughs> or whoever, I don't know. There it is. The finished product. Yeah, it looks way nicer here now without the boxes and with cabinets. So uh, there we go. Only thing, obviously, waiting on the cable way to clean up that mess, but everything else is painted and stained and installed, and the trim is in the side piece. Everything is all nice and all nice and done. So that was phase one, right? After that part was done, uh, basically I stuck all my books in the cabinets, putting the clutter from the floor into a different place that's concealed. Hey, it is what it is. A lot of people do it, don't judge, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, going up to the next section, we had to get the bookshelves installed. So basically what I did was I bought a bunch of uh, four by eight sheets of birch plywood, and then I got those cut down to length uh, as to what I wanted to do to make the skeleton that's going to be installed on this upper portion. So I have the supports for the shelves that are just cut down from a four by eight foot plywood and the 48 inches corresponds to the remainder of the height that I had uh, from the 90 inches that I mentioned earlier. And I just put some spacers in between to make sure everything was even and the remaining space on top was filled in so that I could put some crown molding and then in between the shelves to cover up the exposed plywood. So then after those were already like kind of dry fit and put in place, I stuck some wedges on the inside portions just to give it something to bite into whenever I go to drill ball together. Support it in the back, support it on the sides, and then also get it ready for the trim that was on the top part right here. Whoop, too far. Where are we at? Boom, trim part. Very cool. So now that that part was all put together, right, the next part was also planning out the middle sections here, the middle section there, and so on and so forth, just to cover up that the ply, you know, to make it, like I said, look a little bit more professional. The original idea that my wife wanted to do was uh, I, I got a jig so that I could make these shelves adjustable. I wasn't really sure, like I measured the tallest, the tallest book that she had, uh, and the original intention was just to keep them evenly spaced, like you see here, right? But she said, over time, you know, I might change my mind and I want the option of having those be adjustable shelves. And I said, that's cool. So I got the jig and we did the thing, but um, bottom line is they are adjustable, but they're all uniform at this present time. So then I got the, the shelves installed and I got the front, uh, the front pieces there to make it look a little bit better, clean it up, and then also do the trim that was, like I said, on the on the top, but also on the sides, whoop, right here, right there, and against the closet area as well. So everybody and their mom always talks about that, you know, caulk is your friend. You wanna add a lot of caulk so that you get that seamless look. And I went ample with the caulk, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't sparing with it, I just let it loose and just did all the, all the caulking that I needed to. And so that everything was good, dried up, right? All the caulk was drying whenever I was uh, getting ready for paint. You want to cover up all the exposed gaps and the, oh, all the nails, right? All the nails that go into it, right? Because I got a nailer and it's all over the place. And then the caulk filled those holes really easily. So that was really nice. Last thing is the hardware. So my wife wanted to have like a really cool, if I had all the money in the world, right? She would have one of the rolling ladders like you see in Beauty and the Beast or whatever. That would be awesome and I love the idea, but you know, uh, monies. But anyways, let's get back on track. The placards, right? You might notice that they're not even spaced evenly, but if we can go over here, right? I can give you a closer look as I trip over all my stuff. But right, we got Nonfiction, history, theory, A through M. And then we're going K through Z. There's fiction there. Oh, there's the restricted section right there. Restriction section. Keep out, right? There's Coob. There's the Coob fiction, in case, right? And uh, and yeah, man. And then she just dressed it up, right? Obviously, she she's into her own her own stuff, so she dressed it up real nice. 
And then uh, just to put the icing on the cake, right? I made her a little copper, a little copper rose to stick up in her stuff, right? So that's pretty cool. And that's the final product. So it's really nice how it came together. I enjoy the lack of clutter and how professional it looks, even though you know it's just a a DIY maker kind of dude doing his thing. Like the like the blurb said earlier, right? This was before lumber was you know you had to sell your arm or whatever or like your finest goat to get some decent lumber. At the time, I'd say, you know, sands the tools and stuff that I already had. If you're just looking at the cost of the materials, uh, the cabinets down below here, right? These were like, I think 89 bucks a piece. And at the particular place that I do my shopping, um, it was a 10% discount for me. So one of the nice perks of being a veteran is some places still honor discounts, military discounts. So uh, the other stuff, like the birch plywood and everything, right? So it's a little bit more pricey, but at the time I wanted it to be uh, a little more robust. So I would say that for the bottom portion, right? Uh, you're looking at about, like at the time, it cost me about 300 bucks just to do the bottom portion. And if you wanted to stop there, that's cool, right? You can put your own, you don't even need bookshelves if that's not your thing. Just the bottom part, you're at the, like I said, 300, maybe nowadays it might be like 350, 400 that's doing it yourself without any tools. The upper part where the bookshelves, right, that was probably at the time another 200, 250, I would say. Just from, I got like four of those four by eight sheets of birch ply and then all the molding pieces and the trim. Uh, the hardware I got like right screws, caulk, paint, that's all, that's all factored in different, but you're probably looking at again, maybe another like 50 to 100 bucks that way so all in all if i you know without getting the receipts out i'm probably looking at about five six hundred bucks just to put this together and if you wanted to retrofit some store-bought shelving you're looking to spend 600 just on the shelves nothing else no trim hopefully it inspires you to do your own thing you know what i mean it's not it, it's time consuming dry fitting and discussing and planning right make sure that you and your partner you know what you want if you're doing it yourself make sure that you know what you want personally before you commit, right? This is a pretty big commitment. Work smarter, not harder. And then dry fitting, like I said, it's gonna save you some heartache. The, your walls, right? Your walls and your space. You wanna make sure that it's, pro chances are it's not square. I'm telling you right now, my, my portion is not square. It's really concave, especially in the back. So getting the, whoop, getting this guy situated just right, right? You're gonna have to do a little research on how to configure your piece to fit exactly into how your your wall has uh, bowed or flexed over time if that's your thing right me personally i didn't do it you know why because it's covered in books and who's going to notice anyways maybe 40 years down the line if i go to sell this place they're going to be like oh they didn't even they didn't fill the gap i'm going to be like all right i don't know what is that jimmy stewart uh so jimmy stewart when he buy, when he buys my place i'm you know he can deal with it himself they're probably going to demo it anyway so who even cares i don't care my wife didn't care it is what it is and lastly, the reaction is the best, right? The, gra the gratification of doing a job well done is nice, but whenever your partner comes in and sees the hard work that you put in, and the initial, like the bare bones bookshelf was, was good, personally, uh, but it wasn't until we fixed all the books and all the knickknacks and trinkets and stuff onto the shelf when it was like truly complete, you know what I mean? And at that point, we were both just like, oh, it looks so beautiful. It was so nice. And then she gets to tell her friends and I get to tell my friends and family and everybody's like, oh, it's so nice. And I'm like, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's get the glamour shot. You ready? Yeah. There you go. Hopefully it inspires you, like I said. And thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Till next time. <laughs>